Hey everybody, Jeff here. Today we have another really great project for you. This involves after you've done your kitchen backsplash tiling and everything, you see this light, this switch back here? This is for the garbage disposal. So this is your garbage disposal and electrical outlet in a two gang outlet box that are right here next to the kitchen sink. Okay. And so today what we're going to show you is how do you wire those up? And you gotta be really careful because that outlet by law has to be protected by ground fault. That's a ground fault circuit interrupter protected outlet. And you don't want to connect the switch to that outlet either because they have to be on completely separate branches because remember that switch goes to the garbage disposal. So today we're going to show you everything about how to hook those two up and all of the uh, engineering dilemmas you're likely to encounter. So let's get busy. So here's the old outlet here. So what I wanted to show you here, there's a couple of things wrong here that I don't, I don't really like here. So on this particular outlet here, you can see they backstabbed, which I'm not a big fan of, simply because it's not a reliable electrical connection. And on the switch over here, this is the switch for the garbage disposal. A couple of things I didn't like here. Look how much bare wire they left sticking out of there. And they also backstabbed these as well when you've got two perfectly usable, decent screws right there. So, uh, and then the other issue that I have with the way they originally wired this is, so they didn't use these screws. If you don't use the screws, screw them all the way in and then wrap the thing with black tape when you're done. But of course these guys were just clowns. So, we're going to have to redo all of this. We're going to put in a new outlet and a new switch anyway, and we're going to wire it up correctly. We're going to show you how to wire up an electrical outlet and a switch for your garbage disposal side by side in a dual gang outlet box like this. And we're going to cover a couple of uh, pretty hairy things for you today because as you can see, we tiled up some thick tile in front of this outlet box. And so we have to use uh, some different methods for wiring up our switches on here to get through that depth there. We'll show you all about that and show you how to connect these all up. All right, so I wanted to show you uh, some things here. So we've already taken off the old outlet was here and the old switch was here. And they were side by side just like these two were. And so this was the power for the switch and then this, this black wire here runs down to where the garbage disposal is. Okay, and then there's the black wire for the outlet and for the next outlet down the line that this is gonna be supplying voltage for. And then these are our uh, neutrals that were all tied together. This is how we found it, how the builder did it. Now this outlet will be protected by a GFCI, AFCI outlet that we have right over here on the wall here. So this is the first outlet in the circuit as required by building code in the kitchen to have a, a GFI outlet also and you gotta have, see how it says AFCI? You have to have that on there as well and it's gotta be tamper proof so you can see uh, that's a tamper proof as well, not really tamper proof, tamper resistant is what they call it, TR. Okay, so that is going to be protecting our outlet over here. But here's a problem. Mm -hmm. Because this outlet, when it goes right here, is going to be protected by GFCI. See how they got the common here from the switch? Was tied to it? You can't do that anymore. You have to separate them. So the problem is, what do we do with this? Because there's no, there's no other white wire for it to connect to. So this is where some engineering foresight comes in. So let's take a look at this right now. All right, so what we have to do is we are gonna leave this unused in the box. We'll cap it up and tape it off and leave it floating and that is perfectly acceptable. But now you're probably wondering, how is the garbage disposal going to get its neutral now? It needs a white wire. Well, so let's take a look. 
So here's a simple drawing I made up here to, to show you this. And if you look here, the way the modern electrical code works here in the kitchen, you're required to have a dedicated circuit for your dishwasher, which is what this is. This is the dishwasher outlet under the sink with the disposal on top of it. So this is a duplex outlet, right? And because that's gotta be switched separately for the disposal, right? And so you snip the little tab on there, and I'll show you that in a minute. But basically, you have to have a dedicated circuit for your dishwasher, and you have to have a dedicated circuit for your garbage disposal. And, of course, the third circuit is for the kitchen counter. Um, they call them small appliance outlets. And they all have to be protected by this GFCI outlet, which I just showed you a minute ago. So in a perfect world, in a modern kitchen, this would be one Romex with three wires in it, a black wire and a white wire and a ground wire that comes out. And likewise, this would be its own Romex. It would be, you know, a, a conductor and a white wire and a ground also. And then this Romex would go from the switch also and everybody would connect up and we'd all be happy. And then this, of course, is its own Romex. The problem is, because this kitchen was built probably 40 years ago, they didn't require GFCIs back then. And what they did was they used common neutral. So what that means is all they did from the panel, they didn't give us a Romex with three conductors in it. They gave us one red wire going to the switch that's always energized. And we're relying on this white, the common that's inside this Romex cable going to the outlet. So that's what we're seeing right here. Those two white wires there, that's what the builder gave us there. And this one here is the one that I separated off. So that's this white wire here. We have to separate it off because they have to be separated. You can't have what's supposed to be a dedicated circuit here touching a GFCI circuit. This is where everybody gets it wrong and everybody screws up this. The engineering behind a duplex box here in the kitchens is just mind-boggling for some people and even a lot of professionals get it wrong too so that's why we have to separate this white wire and we have to leave it capped off and loose in there because there's nowhere else to put it the only white wires the builder gave us was this and we can't connect it to there had he given us a Romex cable here that had the white wire hey my job would have been done already we, we could have gone home already so that's all you got to do but if we disconnect this, how does this disposal get the white wire? How does he get the neutral wire? Well, as it turns out, we get lucky here because we're using this as a full duplex outlet, meaning they're switched separately. The dishwasher is always on. This will be switched. This is the garbage disposal up top will be switched. Now, normally, when you do have the full white wire come in, they both tie their white wires together on the, on the left-hand side of the outlet. So let me show you here. So here's your outlet, right? And so normally, the garbage disposal one would go here, and the microwave, uh, not the microwave, the dishwasher white cable would go here on this bottom one. And see, they're connected together. See the, how that's shorted there together? Right there with that, that whole metal piece right there. So now looking at the top side, I flipped it over here and see how the black wires go to the, the brass screws, the darker colored screws. So the garbage disposal will go up top on this one. The dishwasher black wire will go here. Kind of like I showed in the drawing there, see? The only thing you have to make sure of, and this is where a lot of people drop the ball too, is since they're going to be switched separately, you have to get in here with a pair of of needle nose cutters and cl cut this clip right here to separate them so they cannot be electrically connected or you'll blow the, the fuse panel and will start giving you problems and you'll have to go back out and reset it again so that's the thing to keep in mind but the way we do this with duplex is we only do it on the black side on the power side on the other side you still leave them shorted together so the whites will be connected so where is this disposal going to get his white wire from he's going to get it from the dishwasher thank you mr dishwasher because he has a full home run romex from the panel to the outlet that has the black wire the white wire and not shown here the ground wire 
And since the white wire connects on here on the left side, I'm going to put it side by side so you can see it on the drawing. Since the dishwasher's white wire connects right there, okay, the, the garbage disposal will automatically get the neutral. And they're fine sharing the neutral. Why are they fine sharing the neutral? Well, this is why they are fine sharing the neutral, because when you look in the fuse panel, all the neutrals are tied together on this bus bar. You see that silver vertical running metal bar there? That's a bus bar there. And they all just tie back together anyway, right there in the panel. So that's why it's perfectly acceptable to connect them there together in the same outlet. So coming back to my drawing here, you can see these two can have a common neutral. But we cannot let the neutral from these two connect over to here. If you do, and I already just practiced with it just to have a little fun, um, if you connect up this white wire to that, it'll trip the ground fault every time. So if you ever had anybody that, that installed a ground fault and they're wondering why can't I get the thing to stay on when I push the button, it's probably because they did they did something wrong with a um, with a neutral or they they put the line and the load wires in the wrong place when they connected up this one, if it's the first one in the in the in the line there. So that's what we're going to do here, and I'm, and I'm sorry that it, we kind of ran a little bit long talking about this, but this is very, very important. We're talking safety, and we're talking about making sure you're up to the modern code when you do this. This is how you blend old world with new world. So now we're going to go ahead and, and get started with this. Oh, uh, before I do, I wanted to show you one other thing. So you see way in the back there those copper wires? Those are the grounds that come into the box from the Romex cables that enter the box. And they're connected, you really can't see it, but way in the bottom there, they're connected to this, uh, they're tied together and they're, they're connected into this groove that's in, tied to the box. Because that box, that's a metal box, that has to be bonded to the system ground, which means all the grounds that come in there have to connect to it and touch the metal, they gotta be some way connected. And then in order to get our nice grounds into the switch on this side and the outlet on this side we're gonna hook up a pigtail ground see that little hole in the in the back there we're gonna we're going to hook up a, a a green screw with some ground pigtails one for each of their outlets there and that's how we'll get started okay now the other thing we have to do is we have to add this this is called an outlet box extender some people call them goof rings but we have to put this in and all the wires have to feed through it. But this will go in, when we're done, through the hole. And it will go up against the wall there. And this now allows you to mount your outlets to be flush with the front of the wall. And it provides protection for inside. It gives a nice wall of plastic in here. See this wall of plastic? So it protects uh, hands and everything. Um, you know. They just want it protected. They want you to be able to reach all the way straight back as though it's a full, deep outlet. Sometimes people get away with just trying to, well, let's wire the outlet right on the outside and not put anything in there. But that's not really the way it's supposed to be. And uh, check with your building inspectors. They're probably not going to allow you to do that. They will probably fail your inspection right on the spot and make you go and, and get these things. But, you know, check with your building inspectors. All right, so here, let me show you an example here. So here's our, here's our outlet for the garbage disposal up top and the dishwasher on the bottom. And there's our white wires, and you can see they're pretty well shorted together there. They're connected together by that bracket there. See? And then likewise, when we turn it over to make it switchable, there's our black wires. You can see we snipped, it's not there anymore, we snipped away the gold clip that was there. So that's what, what we mean when we say that these guys are sharing a common neutral now. So this one here that leads up to the outlet for the switch, I can leave it capped up there because he'll still get his neutral from this other one from the dishwasher. All right, so to start, I put a Wago wiring nut on the end of my white wire here in the, for the switch going to the garbage disposal. Since we are not going to use that white wire, we're going to cap them off. 
and leave them floating in there. And I'll just put a piece of tape on here to make sure that doesn't go anywhere. And a minute later, there it is, all taped up. Now we're going to work on our grounds. Okay, so first thing I want to do is test the bonding of this metal box to make sure it's bonded to the system ground. So I'm going to use my fluke meter here and it's set to ohms right there. See, And it's going to tell me, right now it's open circuit, it's going to tell me if my box is bonded because what I have to do here is, if you look in the back, I've got that black lead is clipped onto one of the copper ground wires that's coming into the box, right? Then I'm going to take my red lead here and just find a clean spot on the metal and touch it and see if it's shorted. And it is, because watch, there it is overloaded, meaning open circuit. When I touch it, it goes to 0.4 ohms, which is pretty much short. So we know we have a nicely bonded metal box there. Okay, so now we have our ground wire on there, our green ground wire, but we need a second one to go to the switch. This one will go to the outlet. And by the way, so this is what we're using. You should get yourself a box of these. They sell these at Home Depot. These are indispensable. I've already used up quite a bit of a box that I already bought just in this one condo alone because there were so many mistakes from the uh, builder originally when they did the electronics here. Okay, so as we continue to work on the ground system here, I've added this Wago nut here onto the end of our ground wire because we need to take this ground wire and we need to turn it into two ground wires, one to go to the outlet here and one to go to the switch. So I've got these pieces of pigtail that I've made here. We're going to put one on one side of the connector and the other one will go on the other side. And we'll have one for the outlet and one for the switch. And so there you go. So all three are now connected together. And so yeah, these Wago wiring nuts, I like these better than the standard twist-ons. These take up a lot less space. And they just allow you some good flexibility. They're a lot easier. To, you don't have to twist the wires up anymore. Okay, so now that we have all of our wires all ready to go, they're prepped. We're going to put our outlet extender on here. So you see how it fits around the wires? And then it kind of just... We'll have to play with it some. We may even have to cut the back of it a little to make, make it fit or deal with the wires better. But So there's what it looks like at the end there. After you get it in place. So we are ready to start wiring up. This would be a perfect time, if you haven't already, to hit that subscribe button down below. And once you hit that subscribe button, you'll see that little gray bell. Click on that, and that will alert you to every time we put a new video so that you'll never miss a video. And also, if you like our video here, you can click on the thumbs up button down below. That lets us know that you like us. And any questions you have, please enter them in the comments right, down so below, I'm too. All right, so I'm ready to start putting the first wire on to the switch here and we're doing the ground one first and notice how I hook it around it's always hooking around clockwise and that's an important thing to remember when you're when you're looping wires on switches and outlets you always want to loop it around like that clockwise so that when you're tightening because it's tightening is going to go clockwise you want to make sure it's it's pushing down and tightening down on the wire otherwise if I had it going the other way around and I go to tighten the, the screw here, it's liable to make it unravel. It'll make the hook unravel. So you always want to make it go for, um, you know, clockwise. And I'll see if I can do this with one hand, but I usually take my little pliers here. And see how the wire is right there? I'm going to squeeze it shut. Let's get it in the position there. There, so I just squeezed it. So now what I've done, as you can see here, we've closed the loop, making this virtually impossible to come off. Now we'll just tighten it down. And there we are, nice and tight. All 
I wanted to point out something else here about this outlet. Now watch when I tip it upside down here. See those little brackets that come out? What makes this great is I don't have to loop the two wires, the other two wires. I don't have to loop them around the screws. I can stick them behind that plate and then screw the plate down. That's what that's for. Now don't confuse this with backstabbing. Backstabbing is bad. In fact, you can see, if we get it in the right angle, you can see the little holes there for doing backstabbing. There's one right back there on the back of that plastic and there's another one over here on the back of the other plastic there. So you never want to backstab outlets because those are very unreliable connections and they'll either pop out later on or they can trip the arc fault interrupter. So what I'm doing is safe. That's what these brackets are designed for. When it screws down it pinches and crimps against the wire and that's perfectly acceptable and it's very reliable. So there's nothing wrong with doing that. All right, so you can see I've done the first wire there, the red one, and it's pinched and it's held in place by the plate. Now I'm going to insert the black wire. Okay, so now the black wire is tightened in, and all I have to do is connect the ground back to its Wago nut there, and the switch will be fully wired up. Okay, so now what I'm doing here is I'm tucking that white wire, maybe the unused wire there, the white one, tucking it way back in there, all the way out of the way. In keeping with my method of doing things, I usually use electrical tape and I wrap the terminals so that nobody could ever get shocked even if they stuck their hand or a tool or something in there. That's always been my method of operation. I wish more people would do this, but as far as I know, I'm the only person that does this. I haven't seen other people doing this. Okay. So there we go, our outlet is nice and wrapped, and it's nice and safe for anybody to touch it. Now before you mount your switch, you got to make sure it's in the right direction here. So I always look for the word top, see if I can zoom in there and see the, the word top is engraved right there. Now with these particular Leviton switch, if the gold is up here, then you're, you know you're at the top. Or in my case, also the green ground wire coming out on the left side of the uh, switch means it's it's the top. Otherwise, if you put the switch in in the wrong direction, off will be on, will be down, you know, or up. See, if you put this switch in the wrong orientation, that means when you go to switch it on, it'll actually go off. And when you go to switch it off, it'll actually go on. So that's why there is a direction to switches, and make sure you get that direction right. Otherwise, you're going to be undoing the wall plate, four screws, flipping the thing around, and then putting four screws back in, and these things are a pain to put back together. And there is our switch, finally mounted to the box. So now we're going to turn our attention here to the outlet. Now what I decided to do here was to give us an upgraded outlet, so this one has two USB ports on it. So this will allow people to charge their phones, and this is an ideal spot to do it, back on the deepest part of the kitchen counter here, because it's under under this corner cabinet here. So that's a great spot to have it out of the way. And also, we're using this outlet too, because see, the same type thing as with the switch there. See how it's got those little plates, that, the little brass plates that come down? So I can just... Um, do what they call back wiring on this as well because uh, you know way back in the corner here it's it's difficult to just kind of wrap a uh, you know wrap a wire around these screws here because you, you're tucked with your body underneath your heads underneath this thing and you can't even support yourself so the quicker you can get this thing wired and in the better all right so the outlet is now wired up there's your your green wire the ground and this outlet's a little different than the other outlets. Remember I showed you that normally the, the brass screw will be on one side of the outlet and the silver screw will, will be on the other. But for some reason this manufacturer decided to put them side by side. So we connected up. The power goes to the brass. The dark color wire goes to the darker screw. And the white, the lighter color wire, goes to the lighter screw, which is the silver screw there. 
Okay, and remember the reason why we have two going into each one of these, the two black wires there, one is coming from that other GFI outlet down there on the wall. Remember we talked about that earlier? And so is the white wire. So there's a black and a white wire coming from that. And then the other black and white wire go inside the wall, down the wall here to this other outlet that I've installed a little further down on the other cabinet. So these two outlets here are considered the load of that other GFCI outlet on the other side of the wall to the right of the sink. And in similar fashion, I'm wrapping this outlet up too so that the terminals will be covered. Now, before I put the outlet plate on, I usually like to stick these uh, gasket seals on here. These are made to prevent air conditioning from leaking out into the outlet box and into the wall from your room here. And it also will keep moisture out of the outlet box. So anytime you get any kind of uh, moisture or vapor or you know, steam build up in the kitchen. It'll keep it from getting inside your outlet box there. And there is our final product, folks. So we have the plate on, and you can see I have a phone charger cord on there, and I already tested it, and it's working perfectly on my phone, and it charges rapid charge, too. So that's always been a problem with people when they buy other types of so-called USB chargers. They don't do rapid charging. This will do a 3.6 amp uh, rapid charge. Um, so now we're going to test the circuit out here to make sure everything's working. But you can see the outlet tester has both LEDs on, which means it's wired correctly and it's happy. Now if you'll notice what I've got here is that is a GFCI tester button on top. So I'm going to push the button to trip the GFI and you'll hear it click on the other outlet across the room. Listen carefully. So hopefully you heard that. All right, so I've turned the power back on to the outlet. And see those two stickers there? Those are required by National Electric Code. So the top one, of course, tells you that the outlet is AFCI protected, and the bottom one tells you that it is GFCI protected. So any outlets that are downstream from that GFCI outlet over here on the right of the sink have to have it. So as I move down the wall here, to this other outlet. He's got his little tester in there as well and I've got the two stickers on there also. Now I'm also going to test this one too by pushing the button. So I've tripped the GFCI and it cuts the power to the outlet. Alright, so now I've come back to this one and I'm going to test the garbage disposal it works so this operation has been a complete success and uh, 